folks, I'm Rod Machado. Albert Einstein gave us the equation E equals mc squared. It's one of the most venerable equations in all of physics. It's an equation that allows us to understand the relationship between mass and energy. Then again, I've never understood why Einstein, despite his towering intellect, didn't comprehend the equation bad haircut plus no conditioner equals the frizzies. Oh, well, aviation has its venerable equations, too, and one of my favorites involves absolutely no serious math at all. This equation expresses the relationship between attitude, power, and performance. It's to be taken seriously, but not mm, literally, and it reads as follows. Attitude plus power equals performance. In other words, A plus P equals P. No, you don't get this from the App Store either. This is the equation I use on every single flight, every one. When the two variables of attitude and power are exchanged for specifics, I can estimate my airplane's performance with a high degree of precision. Pushing the throttle fully forward at sea level on a cool day and raising the nose to climb attitude allows me to anticipate good climb performance. Good for that specific airplane, of course. Turning base, reducing power to flight idle, and selecting a specific nose down attitude allows me to predict the airspeed I'll achieve during the descent. The equation doesn't lie as long, as long as you are aware of two traps that can alter one or more of the, the variables. For instance, some pilots misinterpret A plus P equals P to read as follows. Attitude plus throttle position equals performance. Unfortunately, the only thing that this equation predicts is that some pilots might have a reason to use the word deductible at some future time. Well, you see, that's because as density altitude increases for normally aspirated engines, the position of the throttle becomes less of an accurate indicator of potential power production. Move the throttle to its full forward position while flying at 4,000 feet MSL on a standard day, and your engine might produce 75% of its maximum rated power. Do the same thing at a higher altitude and or warmer conditions, and, well, you'll get less power even with the throttle pushed to its full forward position. And that's why attitude plus power equals performance is only useful when you consider how environmental conditions influence power production. At high density altitudes, you can raise the nose to your sea level climb attitude and move the throttle full forward, but don't anticipate sea level climb performance. Now, if you understand that, you will successfully avoid trap number one. Trap number two involves mistaking attitude for angle of attack. Attitude is not angle of attack, though it can be a good approximation as long as you compare your attitude to the airplane's direction of motion. In other words, the movement directly opposite the relative wind. Now, most pilots assess their airplane's attitude by looking straight ahead at the engine cowling's position relative to the horizon. But they should also look at the airplane's airplane wing's cord line and the angle that cord line makes with the horizon. Now, you could obtain a good idea of your pitch attitude by using the wing cord as a reference. Just glance out the left window. However, you must remember that this isn't your angle of attack. The angle of attack is the angle between the relative wind, which is directly opposite the flight path, and the wing's cord line. Don't confuse attitude with angle of attack. Remember, here we are using attitude and power to assess our airplane's performance. Now, this is what is meant by the term flying the wing, which is something all pilots should do. Ultimately, you always think in terms of angle of attack, but you fly attitude. Understanding this concept allows you to avoid selecting an attitude that, well, might cause the wings to exceed their critical angle of attack. Of course, selecting the proper attitude for the desired performance level must be accompanied by fine-tuning that attitude with your flight instruments. After all, your initial visual attitude selection puts you in the ballpark while your flight instruments provide a mm, finer measure of performance calibration. For instance, to enter a climb, you will choose from memory 
the desired climb attitude by pitching the airplane upward to an angle above the horizon while simultaneously adding climb power followed by an initial application of trim. Then you'll glance at the airspeed indicator and decide if any pitch change is necessary to give you the precise climb speed desired. Now that pitch change will be made solely by reference to the outside or visible horizon. And the same strategy applies to any maneuver that you'll make in an airplane, anyone. Keep in mind that your individual flight instruments can't give you the big picture of your airplane's attitude and performance. Each instrument provides a small piece of the attitude puzzle. So you don't use your flight instruments to make attitude changes. You make attitude changes by looking outside the airplane, then fine tuning this attitude with the flight instruments. Looking outside for attitude information provides an immediate understanding of your airplane's attitude and performance, especially when combined with the sound and tactile information associated with flight. And this is the basis of attitude flying or stick and rudder flying. It's also a philosophy of flying that simplifies airplane control given that almost all your flying will use one of five different attitude and power setting combinations. Here's a handy aid that my friend Ralph Butcher uses to identify these attitudes. And when I say handy, I mean it involves an actual hand. Take a look at this. By placing your ring finger parallel to the earth, your thumb represents the attitude for best angle of climb. Now it's an approximation, or you might say it's a rule of thumb. Your pointer finger represents the attitude for best rate of climb. Your middle finger represents the attitude for cruise flight, which keeps the cockpit level while the wing sits at about a three degree angle of attack. Your ring finger represents the attitude for best glide, which keeps the wing's cord line nearly level with the horizon and the fuselage pointed down about three degrees below the horizon. Yes, the cord line is level with the horizon on most airplanes during a power off glide at best glide speed. Remember, the relative wind is striking the wing at a larger angle even with the cord level with the horizon because the airplane is descending in this instance. Finally, your pinky represents the attitude for the power off approach speed on final approach with your typical flap setting applied. Now this is just a handy memory aid, but it is a technically advanced one. You might say it's a digital one. So make flying less complicated by keeping these attitudes and power settings in mind. Abraham Lincoln once said that nearly every major decision he made was influenced by the Declaration of Independence. In a structurally similar way, every maneuver I make in an airplane, every single one, is guided by the equation A plus P equals P. Every single maneuver. No, I'm not just sitting there manipulating the controls while mumbling A plus P equals P. Uh, if I did that, I'm sure one of the passengers would yell out, hey, I need a bathroom too. So <laughs> in the back of my mind, however, A plus P equals P is simply my reflexive strategy for flying any airplane. Fortunately, this equation involves no math, which is good because as I see it, five out of four people have trouble with math. <laughs>